Welcome to the International Space Station Flight Control Room. Here with us today, we have astronaut Mike Fossum. Mike, thank you for coming today. We um, have a lot going on on station today, and, and outside of station, and all of it re relates to station. But first of all, um, Mike is a uh, veteran of, of space flights. He's got three space flights under his belt. The most recent one was with the uh, Expedition 20. Nine mission where he served as the commander, and so he where he spent on the International Space Station for 167 days in space. Oh, that's it's a right. long time. Thank you and welcome. So um, let's first talk about what we just heard. We we did get a notification here of a um, potential uh, conjunction with the International Space Station. Can you yeah, talk to us well, a little about sure. that? Sure. And and really, conjunction is a kind of a fancy word for. Uh, we're getting kind of close to something. They, uh, we're watching a number of different pieces of, uh, of uh, de debris. Most of them are like satellite upper stages, boosters, things like that. And uh, there's many of them in orbit around the Earth, and, and some of them are at our, our orbit or the same kind of orbit or altitudes that the space station uh, uh, is located in. And right now, the uh, trajectory officer got word just a short time ago that there's a, a, a significant piece that uh, they have a they don't have a real solid track on it, and it's kind of an odd odd science to try to understand where these things are located and predict where they will be in the future. But this one just popped up as a concern, so they're watching it closely. Unfortunately, they won't get another good look at it to, to uh, refine the tracking information until this evening. It's time of closest possible approach to the crew is approximately 1.30 in the morning, I think 1.30 8 yeah, a.m. Yeah, Houston time, or central mm -hmm. time. So they're watching. They're going to be watching that closely, and shortly they'll be notifying the crew about this. Uh, when you learn about these things, and these things happen every few weeks, uh, where we need to do. Normally, we do a, a debris avoidance maneuver, which basically means we just take that opportunity to give the space station a little bit of a reboost. So we uh, we burn the engines, lift the altitude up a little bit, change our orbit. And that increases the uh, the distance away from that future, you know, passing event. This one we learned about too late, uh, and so um, there's a possibility that we will have to do what we call a shelter in place. Um, we've had six instances in the uh, in the space station program where we've had kind of a late notification, and uh, and there was a concern that we might have to shelter in place. And that means we close all of the hatches on the U.S. part of the space station and retreat into the Soyuz spacecraft to minimize the risk of a possible uh, damage to the station from this uh, passing piece of debris. Twice we have actually done the uh, shelter in place, and I was fortunate, if you call it that, to, uh, to do the second one last summer on June 28th That's when right. we were fairly new to the space That's station. Right. And how long were you guys sheltered in place for that? About uh, 45 minutes or an hour. Okay, it's you, not too You want to get everything close. No, it's not bad. Uh, it's a little disruption to the day, and you're, everybody's a little nervous while you go in sure. to, to do that. But it's a, it's a way of, uh, of uh, just increasing safety and being prudent. Uh, space is a very big place, and uh, there's a lot of... Uh, uh, a lot of margin built into these predictions, but once you get there's there's also uncertainty associated with it. Okay. So it's just a it's a safe thing to do when when there's going to be something gets a little close close enough to make us nervous, we take different actions depending on how much time we have to do, and that's what's going on now. Okay, great. Thanks for that information. So again, we'll just stay tuned and follow along with that. I'm sure we'll have a breaking news if, if it's necessary and uh, there's a shelter in place. We'll make sure that the public gets that information as well. Yeah, the, the, uh, as I understand it, the website will be updated uh, as we learn more information. The website will be updated, and if we get into the point uh, in the middle of the night, actually very early in the cruise mm -hmm. day, they'll, uh, we'll have live TV and, and uh, coverage of that event. Okay, great. And so folks can follow along if you uh, want to keep updated on that um, potential uh, conjunction with the space station, go to www.nasa.gov slash station, and uh, you can get your updates. So now, again, another top of the news you know, item for us is the launch of the ATV-3. This is the European's cargo um, ship that is bringing up seven tons of supplies, and it's exciting, right? Oh, this is really exciting. How exciting is that to get yeah, this the, kind of cargo, right? I, I mean, it was a great launch, uh, great launch last night. Uh, here in Houston, we watched it from Houston, of course. It's the third launch of the European Space Agency cargo ship, ATV-3. Uh, I was fortunate, actually, to be on, 
uh, at the space station to see the first and second vehicles. So now they're finally launching one that I won't see in person up there. But it was uh, it was a great launch uh, to uh, you know as, as uh, the vehicle took off, everything has gone fine. Uh, you know, as always, we're watching a couple of really tiny, small things with it, but everything seems to be on okay. track. The crew's been practiced and prepared. The space station is ready to receive the uh, the ATV as they uh, as it, it it will basically chase the space station down for a few days. We're working the orbital mechanics and getting in closer to the station until it's uh, ready to attach to the aft end. Great, and I know it'll be in orbit for at least five and a half days before it does go and dock for that docking. That docking, again, is scheduled to take place on Wednesday, March 28th. The docking is to take place at 5.32 p.m. Central Time. Now, real quick, I have a uh, question for you that came to us on oh, from uh, Twitter. Yeah, from Twitter. Yeah. We we pulled the uh, verse and want to get some questions for you. So, um, so first we have uh, this Twitter question comes from Jupiter Fix. From Norway. Is there a lot of work for the crew on the arrival of ATV-3, and oh. is there any good food stuff for the crew aboard? Okay, absolutely to both. Uh, there's a, the uh, If everything works right, the ATV will automatically come in and do all of its automatic rendezvous and, and all the way to docking uh, without any assistance from the crew on board. The flight control team on the ground, of course, is monitoring everything closely and uh, interacting with the different systems. But from the crew's point of view on board the space station, it should all work automatically. But that's never good enough for okay. us. So the crew is actually ready to take manual control. And that's, uh, um, I think it's it's Oleg Kononenko and Andre, Andre Kuypers. Kuypers. That's right that are, are trained to do that. So Oleg will be the main flying person and uh, Andre is assisting him with the procedures and backing him up. And, and so it's a, it's a very choreographed thing. They train quite a bit for this, just in case. And, and they'll be monitoring different uh, parameters as the ATV is doing its, uh, uh, doing its approach and coming in close to the station. So if anything is, uh, doesn't meet the, uh, the limits or the expectations, uh, they'll take over manual control and okay. bring it in. Okay. So they have to practice that, make sure all of the systems, the data systems, the tracking systems, and their 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 flight control system or they, that they use to interface with it and do the remote control piloting, is all working properly on the station. So okay. they're all they're all pumped up and ready to go. Good stuff. And and in fact, today they're actually training. They're doing an onboard training right. as well of the rendezvous and docking. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. they go through it all, and uh, and it's important to do that. Now, when you get the vehicle, and it's always great to have a, a cargo ship come up from Earth because, well, there's a lot of supplies that you're waiting for, but the, what what everybody really likes is the stuff that's packed just behind the hatch, and you can and um, the uh, the vehicles from the ground usually come up at a slightly higher pressure than the space station, mm -hmm. and the uh, the, the uh, particular one of the one of the uh, uh, Russian Progress cargo ships that came up. We were all near the hatch, and we started to equalize that pressure, and this air is coming from the progress into the ship, and we we're all gathered around so looking for the smells of Earth. And in that particular case, Earth smelled like oranges <laughs> because there was there were some oranges on the ship, and they had, uh, you know, this, so the odor, the smell of the oranges kind of filled that air, and when it came through the little tiny valve into the space station, we're oranges. We couldn't wait to get the hatch open wow. and uh, get to some of that fresh fruit and vegetables. So oranges, apples, uh, onions, garlic uh, are kind of the common things tomatoes. that have a pretty good shelf life. Yes, tomatoes uh, that have a pretty good shelf life that can, uh, you know, make the trip. And sure. so everybody's looking forward to that. Great. Well, that answers the good stuff part of the question. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so uh, let's move along to now one of the other things that they are, the crew is working on in advance of that. Um, the arrival of the ATV-3 is a little bit of cleanup of the permanent multipurpose module that is also known as Leonardo, the space closet. Uh, right. Tell me about what that is. It's also known as our basement. <laughs> it is the it, basement. It, it's, it's down and and. There's no up or down in space, but you still know where the down is located, and and it's a it's a great big storage uh, you know area, but we're bringing a moving van up, you know 3,000 uh, pounds of equipment coming mm -hmm. up on ATV3. You have to have a place to put it, and so that's that is significant, and we've got to just make sure that the all other things we have there right now are organized and and cleaned up, and you make room to bring in all of this new stuff. Uh, or the, the management of your spare parts, your uh, all of these things that come up can 
really eat up a lot of crew time. And we're not there just to rearrange boxes and bags and, and hunt for lost things. We're there to do other kinds of work. So now, what I understand, there's a lot more involved with, than just, you know, it's not like moving furniture in, from one room to another room. It, it is literally a lot more than that because you have to maintain the inventory management right, system. Right, right, right. To know where things it's are, things database, have to be labeled. Right, and it helps us find things. And, and then all the while you're floating. So it's a little more it's, difficult than it, what... You know, it, you can't just set all those things on the ground outside the garage as you so find places to put them. Uh, you have to, you know, tack them down, have the bungee cords ready and things like that so you can temporarily stow things in certain places and then move them to their final location. Because it's it's a big place. And, uh, you know, in, in, our, in our garages or our basements, we might have things setting on the floor or setting on shelves. In space... It can sit on the ceiling as easy as it can sit on the floor. You can bungee it to the wall. And so you have things in three, three, all three dimensions. It can be anywhere. It can be above that ceiling panel, if you will. Um, and so you have to really keep track of these things in an electronic database. It's really important because if you, it, when you lose them, they're really hard to find because sure. you, you have to look everywhere and it, there's a lot of stuff. Sure. I, rec <laughs> I recall your mission and you were looking for a tube of grease for the oh. for the uh, treadmill, no, the, for the, the advanced resistive exercise right. device and that was that was a lot of fun oh watching my. you hunt right. that down. How are we going to find this? <laughs> well, yeah. speaking of the A-RED, mm -hmm. um, so also today uh, Burbank has had also spent some time earlier this morning on the six-month um, maintenance of the treadmill. It's what time is, already. We did the last yeah. six months. It so what is like just what all is involved with that? It, it's open up all of the panels, get into the details, clean it out for one, because dust will accumulate. And we clean the station every week. Some of the filters in different parts of the station get cleaned very regularly. But there's other areas back behind close-out panels that it's time to, uh, you need to periodically just get in there, clean everything up, inspect it, re-grease some of the moving parts, and, uh, and make sure that nothing has shaken loose. Because that treadmill gets a lot of abuse. You get big guys like me on there, uh, pounding along, you know, running miles on the on the treadmill, and it takes a lot of abuse. So you need to just make sure everything's okay and do minor adjustments before it turns into equipment damage. Okay, great. Well, um, we just had some video up for uh, on NASA television as well. We, I want to go ahead and go to one more Twitter question, sure. and we're getting close to um, also later today we have an event where um, the commander of Burbank, um, Don Pettit, and also Andre Kuypers will take a break and talk with Bloomberg News out of Moscow to talk about the U.S. and Russian um, cooperation. And so uh, we'll have to break for that okay. in just a little bit. But um, real quick, the uh, the next question here is, uh, let's see if I can look this up. It is comes from Fly for Calm. I have always wondered what is the most humbling thing about seeing Earth from space? Wow. I think for me the most humbling thing about seeing Earth from space is just knowing, I mean, it's a magnificent view. And it's always just amazing. In the daytime, you see all of these, these uh, I mean, the continents rolling by. In the nighttime, you see the city lights, the aurora, uh, aurora lights, which are stunning. And just to realize how few people have really had the opportunity to see it from this vantage point, to me, is, is really humbling. And I know how fortunate I am to, to be part of this most outrageous of all humankind's adventures. Sure. Well, great. Thank you very much for answering that. And um, also, I, I know that you came over here in a hurry because you were just out at the MBL pool. I don't know if we have time to pull up any video, but we do have um, Sunny Williams and uh, Aki, Aki Hoshide. Hoshide. Yeah, we yeah. actually do have some video for you. So um, they were both... Uh, they are both working on a uh, practice run at the MBL, right. and this is a practice run for spacewalk, something you know about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I've spent a lot of hours out there at the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory. Uh, Sunny and Aki are launching in August, so they're one of the next crews to head up to the space station. And it looks like they may get a spacewalk to, uh, to do a little bit of maintenance work on the station. So I wanted to talk to them about uh, some ideas for tools and equipment uh, that, we've, that we've been talking about and decided to go out there this morning to help them suit up and then show them exactly how to configure those things on their suits. So I, I got to watch them get started on their run this morning. They're doing great. Great, good stuff. So uh, again, Sunny Williams, she had flown aboard the uh, space station 
um, Award for Expedition 14. So it's been a long time since she's been there. I bet the station's yeah. going to look quite a bit different when she gets there. She also established the world record for females with four spacewalks in her belt, and then Peggy Whitson surpassed her a little right. after that. Um, then also Aki had flown aboard STS-124. He was with on me. your mission. Right. And um, so they are both scheduled to fly aboard um, ISS as the Expedition 32-33 crew member. And uh, again, that launch is set for this summer, and uh, we look forward to that as well. Thank you very much for coming out today. It's all, as always, it's oh, a yeah. pleasure talking it's great with to you. Be here. And um, we're going to go ahead and uh, get out so we can prepare for that in-flight event that's going to be taking place here in just a couple minutes. Um, okay. Again, it is going to be Commander Burbank and Don Pettit, and also astronaut. Um, uh, European Space Agency astronaut Andre Kuipers, who will uh, be talking with Bloomberg News. Thank you so much you for bet. coming hey, out. Hey, it's great to come over here. It's great to watch the crew and what's going on on the space station. It's an amazing place, and uh, these are very dear friends that are up there right now. Uh, we handed the keys to Dan uh, just before we left, of course, and, and have been uh, staying close to the mission, and uh, just really appreciate uh, everything that's going on. They're doing great. They're having a lot of fun. They're getting a lot of work done, and it's uh, exciting to uh, see the mission continue. Thanks a bunch. Great. Thank you. And uh, that's it for today, ISS update. And uh, have a good weekend. This is Mission Control Houston.